second season in Serie A, and it's all changed at Piacenza. We've got new kits. We've got we haven't got a new manager, thankfully, but we've got new kits, new players, even a new formation. Sorry about this. Just finishing off a poll, though. Anyway, second season in Serie A. Now, you'll notice that I've blurred a few things out here. I don't know why I've got my headphones on. Why have I got my headphones on? Hang on a sec. There we go. That was just so I could hear myself eat the polo more clearly. A um, little bit of ASMR for you there. Is it ASMR? ASMR. A little bit of ASMR there for you. So, I've blurred a few things out here because I don't want to reveal too much too soon. As I mentioned before, there's a big change at Piacenza. I think it's for the better. I think it is going to be for the better long term. But I'm going to talk you through it today and then we're going to get on to a game. It's not the first game of the season because I've already started the season. Um, I couldn't resist. But it is a game and it is about the fifth or sixth game of the season and it's against Sassuolo. So first things first, to take a look at this. We've got new kits, new sponsors. Obviously, managing to stay in Serie A has had a huge effect on the big brands wanting to come in for us. So we've got kit sponsors of Nike and Nutella, who are the, one of the biggest brands in Italy. So that explains why they're the sponsor. If you were thinking, what the fuck, why Nutella? Well, they're one of the biggest brands in Italy. And obviously, everybody wants a piece of Piacenza at the moment. And they want it covered in chocolate. So as I said, we've played some games. We've got some new players. Our media prediction for this season was to finish 20th. Again, it's the same as last season. We're predicted to be the team, the main team that is going to get relegated this season, basically. We're the worst team in the division, according to the press. Which is, you know, you would have thought they'd learn their lesson by now. Since you've been gone, I've been offered the Palmer job and declined it. I've changed our formation, which is kind of loosely based on something we did last season in the Milan game, which you, you will have seen, hopefully. And I've brought in a lot of new players. And we had about 13 million euros to spend i've spent about 10 of that and i've brought in quite a few players so i think the, the best thing to do is to start off looking at who we've brought in then we'll have a quick look at the formation the new formation we'll have a look at the results so far and then we'll get on to the game against sassuolo you're gonna have to you're gonna have to bear with me a little bit because i've got a bit of hay fever so you might notice it in my voice you might notice it because i'll be rubbing my eyes and wheezing and coughing and shitting myself all over the place so just just ignore that if you can <laughs> There's quite a lot to concentrate on to take your mind off it. Look at this. Look how many players we've brought in. Total 10.5 million. It's a lot. And But I like signing players that are young players, uh, players for the future, players who show potential, rather than players who've already made it, if you know what I mean. So a lot of these are kind of potentially risky transfers, but, but not risky because we haven't spent a lot of money on them, but risky in terms of they may not end up being a world-class player. There's three in particular who I'm very, very excited about. And I'll point them out when we get to them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through very, very quickly. I'm not going to go through every one of them because some of them are just a bit shit. <laughs> I'll go through as many as possible. And as you can see, the outside of the transfers, it's all been going off in there. We, we sold Simone Carazza for 86k, potentially raising to, uh, rising to 105k, which is not too bad for him. He's a good player for a team in lower divisions, but we don't need him anymore. Velazquez, Venezuelan, Venezuelan, <laughs> Venezuelan even. Um, we signed him from Watford, valued at 1.7 million. How much did we pay for him? We got him on a free. Good, good. And he is a decent central defender. He's going to be playing basically as a no-nonsense centre-back. So let's switch to that. No-nonsense centre-back on defend either side of Jacopo Silva. We've got Alan Luque as well, who we'll get to in a minute. So Luque and Velasquez come in, and you can see the the, the alternatives that we had last season were Pellizzari and Bertoncini. They're they're kind of I was going to say way stronger. You know, they're stronger players than than those two. So I'm happy. I'm happy with those. Musa Sissako, not to be confused with Musa Sissoko. Musa Sissako is an and I was really interested in this guy because he's an inverted wing back, or he likes to play as an inverted wing back. It says his potential ability is only three here. But I do feel like he could potentially he, he could be better than that um, with the right training and playing in the right team, I guess, as well. He's not going to be our starting left back. We've still got Ignacio um, and we've got another guy, Crescenzi, who we will get onto again in a minute. Now, 
the first of the really exciting players, the players that I mentioned that I'm very excited about. There are three, remember, this is the first. Ciro Palmieri. This guy could be amazing. He's three and a half star potential at the moment. Potential, four and a half star ability. He's got some very good attributes, cuts inside from left wing. He's kind of playing as an inside forward for us, which I really like inside forwards. Now, it might seem a little bit strange because we haven't been playing wingers in the past. We've had that kind of spearhead formation that we were using. We're not using that formation anymore. You'll see soon. We've got wingers. He's playing as an inside forward. On the right-hand side, we are playing kind of a winger slash inside forward, a switch between the two, but I will always play Ciro Palmieri as an inside forward. I'd, I'd really like to talk about his stats so far this season, but it kind of seems a little bit backwards because I haven't actually told you what's happened this season yet, so I'm going to get into that probably later on in the save, you know, we'll, we'll it will evolve over time, we'll start to learn about, you know, how good or bad these players are. Daniel Maldini, I don't know if he's related, looks about 12. Just a, just a winger. I'm not going to go into him too much detail. Mattia Maita, he's a kind of solid central midfielder. Um, he's got a, a few interesting traits there. Tries killer balls often, dictates tempo. I like dictates tempo. That's good. But he's kind of cover, really. What I'm doing is I've got two central midfielders who play together. My two first choice central midfielders are Zellalem, because it has to be, and another new guy, Ben Thompson, who we'll move on to in a minute. I also would like to be able to rotate those players, so I want two players in each position, essentially. So Zakagni takes Ben Thompson's place if Thompson's injured or can't, or can't play for some reason, and Zellalem can be replaced by a couple of other players if, if needs be. I love a flair player, 20 flair, so watch out for some skills from him, it's kind of in the vein of Ravel Morrison, potentially. <laughs> He might kick off at some point as well, maybe. Alan Luque is another... He's a very promising 22-year-old Argentinian. Current potential four stars. That's uh, current potential. Current ability four stars. Potential ability four and a half stars. So he's kind of close to his to his um, his full potential at the moment. Um, He came in from Nob. <laughs> Newell's old boys. I love how their badge says Nob. He's a very, very strong central defender. And he's pairing Velasquez... Um, and then Silver is still as that libero in the middle. The second of the three. This player, now you wouldn't think it, would you? I mean, you're looking at this probably now thinking, 775k for a player from Millwall, for an English player from Millwall. Who's this guy? In Serie A? You're joking, aren't you? Well, this is him, Ben Thompson. Now, there are some things he can't do very well, but the things that he needs to do in the position that I'm playing in playing him in he does very well so I mean in natural fitness 18 stamina 18 teamwork 18 work rate 18 aggression and bravery high as well and I'm playing him as a ball winning midfielder in the center so he's essentially supposed to sit there and tidy up he sits behind Zellalem closer to the closer to the defense and just basically smashes people <laughs> and get wins the ball back and um, sets us off on another attack and he's been doing it very well so far. So I'm, I'm very happy about this because it's very rare that you will find a kind of, I say unknown, you, you, probably you know, there may be people out there watching this who know, who've heard of him before. I hadn't heard of him before, didn't know anything about him. Millwall, it's like you're thinking, well, who is this guy? But some of his attributes and his traits as well, I love all of his traits. Plays short, simple passes, that's exactly what I want him to do. Dictates tempo, that's exactly what I want him to do. Dives into tackles, well, okay. Um, an industrious midfielder. I'm really pleased with this guy. For He has got a little bit of a problem with his aggression, because, okay, his aggression's 17, which is good in some ways, but, you know, he's picking up cards, basically. He's already been sent off once, is it twice? I can't remember. There are some issues there, but all in all, He's a fucking rare gem. Ooh, I forgot to tell you, I've got a new director of football. So the director of football has been signing some of these players. Come on, let's go and have a, let's go and have a very quick look at him. Can I get him? There he is. Okay, Giuseppe Pompilio. Pompilio. So this is the new director of football. He's got judging player potential 17, judging player ability 14, motivating 11. He was put in charge of signings over the preseason, basically. But the problem is I 
fucking signed everyone before he had a chance <laughs> before he had a chance to do anything. He's just signed a load of weird little free kids for for nothing, basically. Maximiliano Maximiliano Ribeiro is quite a good player, isn't he? Unfortunately, I didn't realise that I already had filled my non-EU quota, so I've signed him, um, and I can't play him, which is a bit annoying. He's not brilliant, so it's not it's not he was only kind of meant as a backup or a rotation player really anyway. Um, but it would have been nice to be able to play him, and he's come from Nob as well. I've, I've set him. I'm going to piss him off, basically. I've set him to as a loan, uh, as available for loan. So, yeah, he's probably going to get pissed off at some point and kick off, and all hell's going to break loose. I signed him. He's not ter. He's not terrible, but I did. I did sign him for his name. Just thought it might be funny every now and again to have come on the bench. The third. The third of the trifecta and this guy is probably yes no yeah he is he is the most exciting of the three he is the most exciting player that i've signed over the summer and he's living up to his potential and i am going to tell you his stats straight away because you won't believe it Gianmarco landi signed for 1.6 million i actually signed him for on a free but to get him to sign straight away, I paid 1.6 million. I was happy to pay 1.6 million to get him in my team. Look at this guy, he's 18 years old. Okay, looks a bit weird, but he's 18 years old. He's got some very good attributes for an 18 year old. He's already our best striker, best striker in the team. I mean, you look at Gambato, he's all the way down there, and that's unfair really, because Gambato is a good player. And incidentally, Gambato is still gonna feature um, it's just that Landy will be starting, the starting striker. Because, so far in Serie A, he's scored five goals in four games, and he's got two, uh, and at one assist, two player of the match awards, and an average rating of 7.82, and he's only 18 years old. He's an incredible, incredible player, and I can't wait to see what he's going to do this season, because... He's better than anyone we've had. And this is what we've been missing in this position. We've really been missing a striker who can scare the defence, who can finish. He plays in a very similar way to, to Gambato, actually, but he's just got some added threat. And then the idea is that Gambato can be on the bench and Gambato can come on when he needs to. And Gambato can also play on the left wing, so Gambato can also come on for Palmieri if needs be. Buenayuto. Now, we signed him for 2.3 million, and I think he's, he's looking to be a decent player, so he can play on the right on the right wing. He's very versatile. He can play in a lot of positions, so he's kind of a first-team player, three-and-a-half current ability, three-and-a-half potential ability, and, but, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that might change. That might go up a little bit. But he can play in so many different positions that he, he's a very versatile player, and he's not bad in those positions either. And playing him as a winger occasionally, or he, he's, he's been coming on as a substitute winger, essentially. And he's, and he's pretty good. Amato Ciretti. Amato Ciretti, who looks like a bit of a fucking psycho. But yeah, inside forward, again, he can play as an inside forward on the right. So what I've been doing is playing him on the right, um, Palmieri on the left. They both cut inside to support Landy, the striker. And it's been working okay so far. I've also been playing Delivio on the right because Delivio has been playing well as well. So you're kind of switching it up between Cicchetti on the Cicchetti, Cicciretti on the right and Delivio. And then last minute, last minute transfer deadline day signings. Alessandro Crescenzi from Parma on loan. He looks a bit like a young David Bowie. I don't like the idea of a loan player keeping a young up and coming Piacenza player out of the squad, but he's been playing well and, you know. <sighs> can't really drop him because of that and then on the right we've also signed this guy on loan uh, Loic Nigo and he is keeping Triani out of the team so essentially at wing back we've got a loan player on each side uh, which is a shame but th you know they're keeping players out of the team but they are good players and that's about it so what do you think of that load of, <laughs> load of fucking shit isn't it basically there's nobody, there's nobody there that's going to kind of set your world on fire, I don't think, uh, with the potential exception of John Marco Landi, who we'll just have another quick look at because, yes, I like him.
let's see how these players fit into the team now because i mentioned the formation has changed it's it's an, an adaptation of the game of the game it's an adaptation of the formation that we played against milan here we are here we are here we are basically what i've done now is i've made use of all of my three tactic slots at the top and i've got them this is the, this is the main trained formation at the moment which is described here as a 54 541 yeah or oh, you mean you could call you could call it a 3 Three four two one or a three two 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 one or a three two two three or ugh, I don't know. I always find it difficult to determine to name these formations, but yeah, whatever. I've got it as a five two two one there, but yeah, they're calling it a five four one. Why am I going on about this? Fucking shut up. Again, we've got believing goal and the and the back line is the same. We've got a no nonsense centre back on cover and we've just got a central defender on cover and then we've got the libero on support in the centre. We've got two wing backs as normal. Uh, this time we're playing Crescenzi and Nigo though. So then in the cent center of midfield, we've got Thompson as the ball winning midfielder. So he's there to drop into this hole and tidy up and win the ball off players and then sp kind of spread it out to either either pass it as a short pass, which he likes to do to Zellalem or to one of the wing backs who would then bomb on, or to fire it out to Palmieri or Delivio or even up to Landy potentially. So Zellalem still as a, as a Mazzala attack. And actually there's only three players who were in the original squad from, from last season, from the original team from last season here, I believe Silver and Zellalem. They're the only remaining players. So that's a bit of an upheaval. Oh no, sorry, Delivio. Delivio was, was there as well, actually. Palmieri as an inside forward. We've got Delivio as an inside forward. And then we've got Landy up front. I'm, Tent has been starting with a positive or a balanced mentality with this formation, just because the idea of it was that it's actually a slightly, or it felt like a slightly more defensive formation. That was the thinking behind it, but it's turned out that I don't think it actually is. It actually works out more attacking because it means that our striker up front is a lot less isolated than he was with this kind of arrowhead through the middle. Because if you remember before, we had three, well, I'll show you, we had three in the centre there, and then uh, an attacking midfielder sort of supporting that attacker. But to, but to play through the wings actually makes it a lot more viable, this, this formation. It makes it feel a lot more attacking. So then we've also got the two others. As you've just seen, we've got the original formation if we need it, if we want to go with that in, for some reason. But we've also got this slightly tweaked version, which is potentially slightly a little bit more attacking if we need to go more attacking, where what we will do is... The libero drops out of the formation essentially, and the two wing backs become full backs. Two no no nonsense centre backs in the middle. We've still got the, the combination of um, Zellalem and Thompson in the middle as the ball winning midfielder and the Mazala. We've still got the inside forwards and the attacking forward up there, but we've just replaced the libero. The libero's dropped in um, and become the attacking midfielder. And obviously, I wouldn't play Silver there. I'd take him out for Porto Nova or some or something like that. But that's an an option if we're kind of mid game and we feel like we're, we're dominating a little bit and we want to we want to go a little bit more attacking. We can switch to this and potentially dominate a little bit more. Not that, not that we've particularly been dominating, but yeah. Oh no, we have been dominating. Fuck that. We have been dominating, and I'm going to show you. So check it out here. Check it out. Oh, check it out, mate. I'm fucking cool, aren't I? Check it out. <laughs> Just take a look at this, basically. Don't listen to me. I'm talking dick. The preseason stuff went really well. We just fucking thrashed everyone we played. But then again, everyone we played was, was fairly average, apart from potentially Palermo. Then we got to the first competitive game of the season and we played Catanzaro. And we struggled a little bit in that game and it started to get a little bit worried because you can never really judge based on preseason. So as soon as we got in this competitive game, I was thinking this could spell disaster for us if we can't we can't even beat Catanzaro but we did and we got we got there in the end in extra time and we won and fine everything everything was good Chiro Palmer Palmieri scored on his on his debut then first game of Serie A if you remember Palmer offered me a job I turned it down so I was kind of thinking oh fuck this is going to be one of them FM things where it's going to come back to bite me Palmer are going to batter us but they didn't we battered them 5-0 and Landy, the new fucking superstar striker, scored three goals, hat-trick, in his first game. It just could not have gone better, 9.6 rating. And and he didn't stop there, He he's carried on throughout the season just being an incredible player. So Fiorentina, we, pl we played them. Nigo scored uh, for us, which is great. He's the right wing-back, sorry, if you remember. 
it's not really a fair result. It sh- I, I think a draw would have been a fair result there. Th- this reflects quite negatively on, on us, but I think we played quite well and we pushed them at times. And I think at times we looked really threatening. So it's a shame we didn't get a win there, but I was I was quite confident at the end of it thinking, you know, this formation's working. It's going okay, as we saw against Napoli. This was an incredible game. We were winning 3-1, were we at one point? Yeah, we were winning 3-1 at one point. And then Pelizzari got sent off. They scored two goals in the 81st and the 87th minute to bring it back to 3 all, and it was just heartbreaking. And then we beat Atalanta 2-1. Uh, Landy with a goal again, um, and Cic- Cicciretti, the uh, winger, with a goal as well. So, all in all, we've been doing pretty well. Let's have a quick look at Serie A. We're fifth. How many games did we play, sorry, there? Uh, one, two, three, four. We've played four games, and we're fifth in Serie A, which is completely ridiculous. <laughs> it just seems crazy i i don't think we're going to be staying that high but i'm really confident in our formation and our players at the moment and i'm really happy with them and i do think that i shouldn't say this should i i don't think we're going to be involved in a relegation battle this season i think we could quite comfortably finish mid-table if we perform to our kind of potential landy equal top scorer with five goals up there with chiro immobile and cristiano ronaldo what fucking signing he is i'm a genius G, yes, that must be what the G stands for. And then Ben Thompson, as I mentioned, he's had three yellow cards, so he's the second highest cards. So we do have a little bit of a negative there, but I, I fucking love him, so I don't, I don't care. And it, that shows his commitment, you know, to me. I think, good, go and fucking break some legs in Serie A. And I'm a Stoke fan, so, you know, that's, that's the kind of football we like. Long throws and leg breaks. 